Welcome to this Sunday Gospel Reflection, The Ascension of Our Lord. Let me start with a short story. A parish priest once asked a little altar boy what he would like to become when he grows up. And the child replied without any hesitation, I want to become God. The priest was <laughs> taken aback and uh, asked the boy to, to explain why. I want to become God so that I will not get sick, suffer, or die, answered the boy. That child has already touched heaven. No, this is no childish flight of fantasy or dream. This is eternity and infinity, right in the heart of our day-to-day -day struggle to live. It is the very core reality that pushes us on right in the midst of the drudgery of earthly existence. Somewhere, somehow, right within us, we have already tasted the gloriousness of a boundless and limitless life that is constantly calling us forward. What makes our humanity beautiful is our inexhaustible thirst for more. We want more love in our relations. In our daily life, we want more speed in travel, more achievement in sports, more knowledge in science, more strength in our weaknesses, more beauty in art or music, poetry. The sky is the limit. This is our greatness that wells up from within us, aching to grow and reach out to that infinite and eternal being that we call Spirit, God, that is already within us. Yes, that little child got it right. We are made for greater things. We are born to become God and not to be painfully reduced into the nothingness of death and dust. Blessed are we if we realize that infinite, boundless, eternal life is not for tomorrow. It's not a question of an afterlife. If it really exists, it must be today, in the here and now. And it really is. Just ask the ecstatic mother lost in contemplating the beauty of her child. For her, time stops in its tracks. And the same for any lover in the presence of his beloved. Ask Mozart why he did not stop composing after his first symphony or sonata. Ask Mother Teresa why she did not stop after helping the first and starving poor in, in Calcutta. Ask yourself why you are still missing your dad, your mom, your child, your husband, your wife. Can't we see how we are living eternity right now? Can't we see how the, our limited earthly existence is just the point where we meet the eternal and boundless joy of God's spirit of love? This is why we rejoice and celebrate today's Feast of the Ascension of Jesus and our own Ascension. If I don't go, how can I send you the Spirit? If you don't let go, how can you be ready to receive what comes? If you don't embrace the sky as your limit, how can you live and love in the limits of earthly life? And time. No, we were not born to get sick, suffer, and die. The beauty of who we are is that we are born to become God. Not gods, but God. One with Him who is the life and glory of heaven and earth. But there is no other way to reach out to this more of life except through pain 
suffering and loss. It's the pain of leaving our small self to grow into our greater self. The pain of letting go of our human smallness to reach out to our divine greatness. The birth pangs of God being born within us and through us. As the apostles remained with their eyes fixed on heaven, still struggling to grasp what was happening before their eyes, amazed by its heavenly glory, yet saddened by his departure, the angels came to their rescue. Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. A very surprising consolation. If he went up to heaven, surely his return would be by his coming back down from heaven where he went. But no, he will return in the same way you have seen him go. That is, he will not return by coming down from up there, but by coming up again from down here below. His point of departure remains our humanity. That is, from where you humans, would say, as if the dangers were saying, from where you humans, his disciples, are still grounded here below. That's where, where he will be coming back from. He will return among you and through you, if you will live by his Spirit down here. Following Jesus is not leaving the world to enter some new, more beautiful, more pleasant heaven somewhere else. It is giving birth to Jesus by our living in and loving this world as he loves it. Being a Christian is being the presence of Jesus in this world and yet not being bound and limited by this world. It is living here and now the ultimate beauty our world we are destined for. Walking joyfully our earthly pilgrimage, fully aware that our real home is God's own heart and not just our poor little planet. This is what it means to live as Christ's disciple, as a Christian. Like him, the Christian is fully committed to this world but does not totally belong to it. It is loving this world but not letting his spirit be imprisoned by it. Fully living the here and now, but reaching out to the more of life that is calling us from heaven, from God's heart. Through his ascension to heaven, Jesus is opening the way for the ascent of man, of humanity. It's not leaving this world for another, but transforming this world into another one that is more beautiful, more divine, peaceful, loving, just as God had intended it to be from the very beginning. An earth that is heaven. In the second or third century of the Christian era, a certain Diognetus expressed all this so beautifully in a letter to the Christian community struggling in the world of their time. Just reflect a little bit on these words he wrote. Christians are indistinguishable from other men, either by nationality, language or customs. They do not inhabit separate cities of their own or speak a strange dialect or follow some outlandish way of life. Unlike some other people, they champion no purely human doctrine, 
with regard to dress, food, manner of life in general, they follow the customs of whatever city they happen to be living in. And yet, there is something extraordinary about their lives. They live in their own countries as though they were only passing through. They play their full role as citizens, but suffer the limitations of aliens. Any country can be their homeland, but for them their homeland is a foreign country. Like others, they marry and have children, but they do not abandon or kill them. They share their meals, their houses, but not their wives. They live in the flesh, but they are not governed by the desires of the flesh. They pass their days upon earth, but they are citizens of heaven, obedient to the laws, yes. Yet they live on a level that goes beyond the law. Christian. Yes, the ascension of Jesus to heaven is not his abandoning us like orphans in a messy world. It is the good news that through Christ, all humanity is destined for much greater things than surviving their brief existence on earth. For you, for me, for each of us, and all of us together, the destination is not here or there. The destination is the infinite openness and beauty of God himself that has already been sown in our hearts. Indeed, the sky is the limit. Thank you and God bless you.